um, kind of defending that champion title, but in North America now, which is very exciting to see. You can see our deck list here for both these players. Nathan with that origin form at Palkia V-Star, something we're very familiar going into. We saw a lot of yesterday and day one as well. Yeah, this is definitely a great match for us. We've seen Arceus and Teleon think that they're favored in this matchup, but of course, Radiant Greninja on the other side can certainly make things interesting. Sharon's Care is going to be such an impactful card in this matchup. Something to look out for as you see the dice start to hit these Pokemon. Yeah, and of course, Luca piloting that Arceus and Teleon. I'm sure uh, both of our players are very comfortable with their deck list. They have been playing the past two days here. I'm sure they practice a ton in these matchups you know these decks are not any sort of secret to any of our players in any age division here so i'm sure they have run this uh this matchup plenty of times but sometimes kyle it does just come down as we've seen in so many of our matchups this weekend to that initial starting setup as well so uh even more pressure on the line and a little bit of anticipation here to see how our players are both going to set up here leading into this matchup yeah, that opening hand when you're in the finals of a tournament is probably the scariest moment that you will have because it all but determines a lot of how you're going to set up, how you're going to perform. And uh, if you do not get dealt the right cards, you have a lot of adversity to, fa to, to face here. So uh, I'm very curious to see if both these players end up with the Pokemon they like. Uh, maybe the battle VIP pass coming down on the side of Palkia. So that's something we always want to be looking out for. Yeah, and I mean, it is no easy task as well to ha be on the stream. You know, we always talk about the lights, the white noise is in the ears as well for both players. So there's no disruptions from the crowd, no distractions there for either of our players. And that can be, I'm sure, a little bit nerve wracking. Of course, both of these players, uh, I'm sure, used to being on the big stage as we discussed before. So I think we are going to see some very high uh, skill level play here from both these players on the big stage. And here we go, taking a quick look at the prize cards here as our players set up. Nathan with uh, a Palkia V and a Palkia V star in the prizes. We have Melanie as well, but nothing that's going to be too detrimental. I don't think that choice belt may be coming in, um, depending on how many are in the list, coming in as a potential danger there, having it in the prize cards. But we also have Lucas prize cards. Did you see anything in there, Kyle? Yeah, that big charm certainly could be an issue. Having multiple big charm when you're trying to use Sharon's care and make use of keeping your Pokemon on the board is going to be big, so especially having that on the lower end of your prize cards could be beneficial for that mid-game. But we don't have time for mid-game. Let's go ahead and jump in, and wow, what a start here. We see the VIP passes coming down. Take both yes. of your friends backstage. Yeah, just throwing two battle VIP passes, which we have discussed so many times in uh, this Origin Form Palkia matchup, is so crucial to this deck. You know, many deck lists opting to play four of them just to have that consistency. And Nathan obviously getting very lucky here with that opening hand, having those two battle VIP passes. I'm sure feeling very comfortable going into this right now. <sighs> that is the best feeling. We saw Isaiah talking about this in the Masters Division. He, he had to, to try to summon that battle VIP pass to the top of the hand so that or to the top of the deck so that he could get this and sure enough we see Nathan starting off as hot as it gets capacious bucket as well two water energies and you have to start thinking Radiant Greninja is going to make an impact here Oh, definitely. Uh, that Radiant Greninja being a huge card in this matchup, not only for its concealed cards ability that allows you to discard a water energy to draw two additional cards, but also that Moonlight Shuriken is nothing to, uh, to shrug off either because that is an extremely powerful move, especially when you're going against an Arceus and Teleon that has a, a draw engine of Sobbles and Drizziles that can be knocked out from that Radiant Greninja. So yep. what we saw right there was that Hisuian Heavy Ball. That is a great card um, if you do happen to prize a Pokemon, a basic Pokemon that you might need because it allows you to look through your prizes, grab that basic Pokemon out of there, which of course for Nathan we did see was that Arceus V. So Nathan now having that in hand and replaced with that Hisuian Heavy Ball. Yep, we do see that Radiant Greninja now going to add a couple extra cards. We see the Palkia V Star enter the hand, so going to have a the main attacker of this deck 
for the following turn. Yeah, definitely. And there's so much, so many decisions to be made here by Nathan, but playing very comfortably, attaching that energy to that origin form of Palkia V and passing over to Luca now. So we are currently on Luca's top deck here. Looking through the hands, Kyle, is there anything that you see that could potentially make this a pretty good starting hand? Yeah, we saw the quick ball, but going to start off great sequencing here. Use the Avery, give yourself an opportunity to maybe find more basic Pokemon if you want. And we see the energy attachment for the keep calling. So we could certainly see this quick ball go ahead and find an Arceus. That's such an important card to find here. Uh, just to start getting that set up, you're not going to have the energy attachment, but we know this deck does play Melanie. So finding waters, getting those into the discard pile, you're certainly going to have an opportunity to accelerate and blast off next turn. Yeah, absolutely. And Luca, um, having the ability to play that supporter because he is going second. Of course, Avery is a card you don't necessarily want to be playing um, only to draw cards because it does have that very powerful ability as well to limit your or, or to discard down to three bench Pokemon for your opponent. But of course, when you have a starting hand and not much else to work with, that's what you're going to have to go with. And that's what we saw there. So we are going to see a keep calling here now from Luca on that Sobble in the active, searching your deck for up to three basic Rapid Strike Pokemon. Of course, those Sobbles are Rapid Strike Sobbles, so they are hitting the bench there now. And then we are shuffling up, and then it is going to go right to Nathan's turn for yeah, a second turn. This is this is dangerous, but also understandable from Luca benching all of the Sobble here from the Keep Calling, going to expand the bench, but also have more opportunities for Drizzile to assist later on. This does start to walk into stu uh, the subspace swell, though, however, and here we do see Origin Form, Palkia V-Star, and a Drizzile to help find some additional help here. Certainly, if we see one more Pokemon, we could see this Archaea V falling on the second turn of the game, and that's the only one that yeah, we, we see right now. We do need that uh, energy as well, but that is not going to be any sort of difficulty for Nathan here from that Drizzile Shady Dealings, searching out the Capacious Bucket to find those two water energies, discarding one now to a Quick Ball to search out a basic Pokemon from the deck as well. Grabbing a Sobble. And yeah, we've, t we've talked about this a little bit, Kyle, yesterday about kind of having to play around, you know, having a draw engine, but also limiting your bench when you're going up against that origin form Palkia. Because of course, every Pokemon that hits the board state is going to uh, just boost that damage output from that origin uh, form Palkia V-Star. Yeah, if you want to play Pokemon, you're you're going to be in trouble because you have to fill a bench and Origin yeah. Form Palkia V-Star loves seeing that. We also see the second Palkia V there. So the Avery only going to be a minor nuisance. We see multiple attackers now lined up for Nathan and going to use that Evolution Incense. We can certainly see this potentially go for a card like Boss's Orders or an Irida to start working on Cross Switcher plays. Just depends on what lines up with this hand and it looks like it's Boss's Orders time. Yep, so that Evo Incense into the Drizzile for that shading shady dealings ability to search out that boss's orders so switch one of your opponent's bench pokemon with their active it is a gusting effect that nathan is going to uh, be able to do here and that is not really too great to see here for luca because there is only one arceus v on his board state currently yes this means that we will not see arceus v star uh, coming out at least next turn, and surely enough, the Star Portal as well going to be used to full effect here. Three water energies, and this is where we're really going to feel for Nathan's strategy. If he wants to work with the Radiant Greninja, or if he feels like playing the prize exchange, and when you see that energy go to Drizzile, certainly you have to think that Aqua Bullet may be on the table near the mid or late game of this point, wow, but sure go, enough. that boss's orders to take the knockout there on the Arceus V4-2 prize cards. Yeah, that is absolutely huge. Luca now has a big problem. Going to have to find a multiple Arceus V because we're just double cross switcher away from four prize cards for Nathan in three turns. Oh yeah, and that is huge. I'm sure Nathan uh, feeling very confident with that play. Luca here now discarding a scoop up net for a quick ball to search out another basic Pokemon. So at least being able to search out another Arceus V to put there on the bench. 
Um, does Luca play any big charms? I think we did see one in the prizes, Kyle, yep. if I remember correctly, but I don't know how many of them are in the deck. Uh, but that could be a problem here because there is the potential within or because you are waiting a turn uh, to actually evolve into the V-Star, there's always that sort of um, risk of having another knockout from Nathan, especially with such a strong board state for Nathan as well, being able to search out kind of whatever cards that he wants with uh, Drizzile evolutions, Inteleon, Shady Dealings evolutions. So that is definitely something that is uh, kind of scary to be eyeing down. Yes, the, uh, there is the second big charm in this list, and it could potentially help out, but not this turn anymore, because there's a full bench, and that's 260 damage base for this origin form Valkyrie V-Star. And uh, we already see it, a, a really sad discard here off of the quick ball, that Roxanne. It's a great way to start to come back in this matchup, but we do know that Luca has ways to bring this back by way of the pow pad. Yeah, that's great, especially it being so essential that two Arceus V hit the bench here because um, there is the potential for one of them to be knocked out here for Lucas. So he needs to give himself an out to have some sort of recovery position. We are going to see the Marnie here initiated by Lucas. So both of these players shuffling their hands, putting all those cards that were in the hands to the bottom of the deck. Luca initiating the Marnie, being able to draw five cards and giving Nathan a fresh four random cards as well. Yeah, Luca would love to put Nathan on a hand that just doesn't have any evolution in sense, Ultra Ball, uh, Inteleon, but that just the pass of the turn, and we see that Luca has that double turbo energy on an Arceus V, and there's an Inteleon with Shady Dealings. We could definitely see a double cross switcher turn here. Yeah, this is a huge play from Nathan, kind of what we followed up into, and that is exactly what he's eyeing down here right now, that Shady Dealings ability on the Inteleon being able to search out two trainer cards, and those two cross switchers are an easy pick there, but he's actually gonna go for one cross switcher, the Irida, which is leading into playing the Irida right away to be able to draw even an additional card, so not just the two cross switchers, but he will have the two cross switchers and that origin form of Palkia V-Star as well. So incredible sequencing here from Nathan. Yeah, just being able to thin your, your deck out by one more card can be so impactful. You also get another attacker lined up because there's an origin form Palkia V already with a water energy. And the scoop up net is gonna be a nice inclusion too. You could just uh, go ahead and pick up this Inteleon and have an opportunity now to even search out more cards with the, the shady dealings. Yeah, just so so much uh, so much dominance in this gameplay here. Just re uh, scooping up that Inteleon and then re evolving into it to search out two more trainer cards, grabbing that secondary cross switcher and that path to the peak for Nathan here, which is a huge huge card, a huge grab here for Nathan against Luca because it shuts down that Arceus V Stars uh, V Star power ability. Yeah, this is, uh, this is pretty unfortunate for, for Luca because he played the Marnie and Nathan played the Path. That's a really good combo to win games, but unfortunately it's going to lock himself out in this situation. Double Cross Switcher is going to be the move and just has to decide which Pokemon is switching right now. Oh. Did we see the switch or did... Did we miss that, Kyle, for the switch? Because cross switcher... Maybe, maybe there was just a quick retreat off the Inteleon. The water energy just moved, been, saving some time saw. for us. Absolutely. So Luca now back to a turn here. So we will be able to see um, at least a little bit of recovery, but definitely going to be difficult here with that path to the peak in play. Oh, and just as I said that, it is bumped for a collapse stadium. Nathan discarding that Radiant Greninja off the Collapse Stadium. Both players' benches are now limited to four Pokemon uh, because that Collapse Stadium is in play, but even more importantly, it bumped the path to the peak that was limiting Luca to be able to use that V-Star power ability. So now that is freshly open here for Luca to take full advantage of. Yeah, this is a nice play. You get to limit the bench for both of these players now. Crobat not going to be seen play. Just too low of a hit point count. 
and we are going to see some Arceus V coming back in, and the Rihon, a nice inclusion to get that water energy onto this Arceus V star. Start thinking about some relevant attacks, and we can finally see Luca's plan. He wants to have Arceus V stars in play, and then start to recycle them by use of Sharon's care in the following turns. Yeah, that Raihan is huge there. If your Pokemon was knocked out on the last turn, you're able to accelerate an energy with it from the discard pile to your Pokemon and then search out any one card from the deck as well. Well, it looks like one of these cards is going to have to be a scoop up net because uh, Luca has limited his own bench. Needs to find an opportunity to get the Arceus back down into play. You'd love to accelerate those energies by way of Trinity Nova. And we do see the big charm come down onto this Arceus V Star. 310 hit points in the active. Yep, boosting that 30 HP there for Luca. We see an evolution into a Drizzile here for that Shady Dealings ability, being able to search out any trainer card from the deck. What do you think he's looking for here, Kyle? It's tough to say. Of course, you're trying to think about future turns, so maybe uh, just try to find yourself another way to get back into the deck, or you can start working towards pow pads so you can get that Roxanne, because you really need to start thinking about limiting Nathan's opportunities uh, to, to draw out of this situation. Yeah, and we did see the evolution incense off that Drizzile, and then just swinging with that Trinity Nova, slight uh, damage reduction there from the double turbo, doing 180 damage there to Nathan's active origin form Palkia V-Star, but the major proponent of this as well, being able to search out three basic energies from the deck and place them onto a V Pokemon or any V Pokemon in any which way you like. For those three energies, we are seeing Luca put all of them onto that bench to Arceus V, preparing it to become another attacker in these uh, plays coming up. Well, this is probably the riskiest turn of the game that we have thus far. Luca is, has that Arceus V, but it only has 220 hit points on the bench. And we know that Nathan does play the four copies of Cross Switcher, two already played to take a huge knockout. But maybe if there's an opportunity to find two more here, we could see this game close out. Oh yeah, there's so much pressure here. Nathan just making sure that he knows all of his outs here studying the hand, looking what's in the deck. Very important decisions. Yeah, I think that this would work if there is an additional Drizzile. You'd be able to go and find the Cross Switcher in combination with the Drizzile, play the Drizzile, grab the second Cross Switcher. Yeah, looking through the deck here. Don't know if that resource is available. It looks like the line is going to be a Shady Dealings Inteleon. Yep, that Irida drawing out a water Pokemon and an item card. It looks like it's going to be the Capacious Bucket being able to be played and draw out two water energy from the deck straight into the hand. Yep, always nice to have additional water energy. It's going to have that Origin Form Palkia V-Star ready to go on the bench. All right, placing that energy on to that origin form Palkia V-Star, as Kyle said, just getting it ready uh, because there is a lot of damage here on the board on the active Palkia. As we see, we are going to see a stadium bump into Temple of Sinnoh. That is kind of a huge play here, Kyle. Yeah, pretty tricky. Going to make that special energy in the double turbo. Only provide one energy. So right now, Arceus V-Star does not have a relevant attack ready to go potentially would have to retreat or use that Sharon's care we spoke of earlier. Yeah, just limiting all special energy to just one colorless. Nathan really deciding how these future turns are going to play out. So much focus here from him. I did see a tool jammer almost come down, but he decided to pick it back up. Yeah, tool jammer is a nice way to surprise your opponent. Yeah. You're not going to see it too much for uh, the choice belt. This deck likes to use the, uh, the big charm instead. So maybe you can get a knockout when your opponent isn't ready for it if you make use of that tool jammer. So we do see the damage dealt from that origin form Palkia V-Star, right, or sorry, Palkia, yeah, V-Star, right back into Luca's turn here, evolving into the Arceus V-Star on his side now. I'm gonna see that shady Ooh. dealings one more time. 
JD Dealings surging out two trainer cards. Oh, and we are going to most likely see this heel loop here from Luca, potentially drawing out that Sharon's hair that is going to allow Luca to just pick this Arceus V-Star right back up, get rid of all of those damage counters that are currently on it, uh, leaving it at a liability on his board state currently. So being able to take that out of play completely, deny those prize cards to Nathan can really get him back into the game here and catch up. Uh, so he is definitely trying his best right now to stay in this game. Yeah, we see that the big charm would also be going back to the hand, so that's going to be a really nice addition. Going to have that, and if these prize cards are taken, which it looks like that will be the case, we'll find a second big charm in the prize cards. Also, very sneaky, going to work in the Inteleon here. Could potentially see an Aqua Bullet here to take a nice knockout here on the Palkia and maybe soften up an additional Pokemon. Yeah, we see the path to the peak come into play. We are going to see that Aqua Bullet taking the knock here on that active origin form Palkia V-Star and then 20 a damage on the bench as well. Nathan promoting that bench. Uh, origin form Palkia V-Star. Luca putting up just a one prizer Pokemon. Nathan has two prize cards left so he is either going to have to find a way to... I think we see it. Yeah, this is... Uh, I we, saw one cross switcher. Yep, we see that cross switcher. And uh, that is going to be the only draw here because I think the other one is in hand. We see the double cross switcher. Water energy to retreat. This Palkia V-Star is going to be taking the knockout on Arceus. And that is game one Fantastic for Nathan. Gameplay from both of our players here. Wow, Kyle. You know, we are casting, of course, this is our junior's age division here, but I feel like I am watching a Masters game right now. Yeah, the, don't let their size fool you. These players are going big brain on us. They have all of the plays, and it's been really fun to watch. Uh, the, just Luca and Nathan finding the, the, the perfect lines, trying to work out how to make this game even closer. Just wasn't able to work for Luca in that spot. Couldn't find the Arceus at the right time, but you're also playing against Palkia that went double battle VIP pass. That's not supposed to happen, right? Yeah. I've got game two, potentially game three. Maybe I can work this in my favor. And Nathan only does play three of those battle VIP pass, so hitting two of those on turn one, absolutely wild setup there for Nathan. Extremely strong, especially because he was kicking off the turn and going first as well. So getting that uh, lead in the evolution race as well, I think really just gave him such a great start up uh, in that game there. Luca deciding to bench that Arceus B at the end there, but deciding to put the big charm on the V-Star. I'm wondering if uh, he had held off on that, if we would have seen it play out a little bit differently. Uh, but still, if you're left with kind of no recovery, no other attackers, it's a very difficult situation to be in as well. Yeah, we did see that, I, I believe there were upwards of nine Pokemon there, so 240 yes. would have been 10 short, but there was the Tool Jammer just, it, it could have worked out either way. We can understand the play from Luca, but maybe yeah. if you have multiple big charms, you can avoid situations like that. Yeah, but those are definitely hard to get when you're already sort of on the back foot when your opponent is going first with such a strong opening hand. So I think we are going to see uh, Luca now deciding whether he wants to lead first, first or second. I would assume he's probably going to choose first as well just to get that head start as we talked about uh, already with the evolution race uh, because that Arceus V-Star is huge for Luca to be able to use that V-Star power, that V-Star ability to kind of line up his beginning plays into his strategies against this origin form of Palkia, search out those two cards from the deck and really uh, capitalize on a strong in intro to this game, just as Nathan did in that former game as well. Is this two mulligans now, Kyle? Yeah, that's uh, that's not going to be helpful. We did see Battle VIP pass in the hand, and I'm like, oh, it's going to happen again. But no, you need a basic Pokemon to start the game, and that just means that Luca gets even more cards to start things off. We did see the start, or at least I did. There is a <laughs> Sobble in the active spot, so maybe these cards could uh, help Luca in finding that Arceus. That was the one key piece missing in the opening hand. If you get that Arceus and that energy, surely you have to think that Starbirth is going to get you the rest of the way on the second turn. All right, let's see if Nathan can now secure a basic Pokemon. And we do see it, that origin form at Palkia, but those two mulligans are going to lead 
to two extra cards as well here for Luca. Drizzile, cross, double cross oh, wow. switcher. Wow, double cross switcher in the prize cards for Nathan. Obviously a huge deal here because we saw how important that was to the original game. Look at all of those ball cards though for Luca. It's a lot of search. Hopefully he finds the Pokemon themselves to help out here. But we're going to go ahead and jump into game number two of our juniors finals with a level ball. Here we go, getting into this matchup here. Luca leading for the turn. I think there was two level balls in the prize cards, but we are seeing one level ball here for Luca, having to use it to draw out a Sobble here. Sometimes you like to save those level balls because it does search your deck for a Pokemon that is 90 HP or less. So really great for searching out those Drizziles, but we do already see one Drizzile in hand for Luca, so I'm sure just feeling confident using that level ball to search out a Sobble. Yeah, we do see the Ultra Ball, thankfully, and there was a double turbo in hand, too. A great energy to find here. You're not worried about any disruption on the other side. Nathan just wants to do big damage. So we are going to see also that use of the Pow Pad. A nice discard there with the Ultra Ball, saying, I don't need these supporters right now. I'm going to go ahead and shuffle them back in, get my hand nice and thin, maybe work in a Crobat. Yeah, especially, um, you know, Luca, it, you can obviously tell that Luca knows what the optimal start is for uh, him going first, especially. So being able to discard uh, those two supporters to the Ultra ball, ball, but then also shuffle them back in with the Pal Pad is huge because I'm sure those are going to be important down the line. And now he's really lined himself up. Two Sobbles in play, the Energy Attachment, a Choice Belt as well being played down onto that Arceus V. So everything he needs and all he has left is that Crobat and the Drizzile, and he is going to opt for that Crobat play into the Dark Acid here ability drawing up to six cards in hand so not not only having that extremely strong drizzle in hands but now even more cards to line up this starting uh hand here for luca yeah this is very nice finds the quick ball off of this crobat now and finds the second arceus v this is a big key piece in being able to accelerate energies to a secondary pokemon have an attacker ready to go and then you can start using that sharon's care chain that we talk about so often in this deck yeah and that's going to be huge for luca as well a, a, a large advantage having that sharon's care only works on colorless pokemon that have damage counters on them so to be able to uh, like we said in the last matchup, deny those prize cards and kind of limit Nathan's ability to even uh, get down in the prize cards is going to be huge for Luca to maintain momentum going into this matchup. Already being down a game, the pressure is on here for Luca, but he's still playing like a champ here in the championship Sunday, doing a great job. All right, so we are just passing over to Nathan now. Nathan able to use a supporter because he's going second and opting to boss his order up that Arceus Ugh. V. Defensive boss turn one. Luca loves to see that. Yes. It's going to be a very slow start likely for Nathan. Just going to rule the region. Find that Temple of Sinnoh potentially slow down Luca and those double turbo energies. But this is not how you want to start your opening game here in game two. No, obviously not. Nathan's entire strategy kind of relies on benched Pokemon and Pokemon in play. So not being able to get those benched Pokemon down, especially the Sobbles, being able to line up future plays, uh, activating that Drizzile Shady Dealings as well is going to be huge for Nathan to not really have set up here for the future. Oh, this is so cool. The Ultra Ball double water discard, and there is a Melanie in hand. So going to be able to accelerate these energies. Certainly Arceus V with no energies is an awkward Pokemon to have in the active spot. But if you can find a way to accelerate, then you have to think that Arceus V star is going to come down and use that Trinity Nova. Yeah, absolutely. And then all we would need to see on top of that is the, uh, the ability to draw out that double turbo energy to attach there and be able to get an attack off with this Arceus V-Star. So even though Nathan uh, bossing there for that turn, we are still going to see a, an attack here from Luca. So definitely not what you want to see from Nathan's point of view, uh, because it, even though that boss was hoping to disrupt, I think it ended up uh, not being too much of a hassle for Luca to have to deal with that 
power of the V-Star, power that uh, Starbirth ability on the Arceus V-Star really making a name for itself in this matchup right now. Yeah, before Astral Radiance, Starbirth was ruling the region, but, and Palkia did not <laughs> have anything to do. It wasn't, it, didn't, it wasn't in existence yet. And we saw this deck dominating so many regionals, and then Astral Radiance came out. We saw Palkia start to shine, and there's really been a battle of which deck is the more consistent build. You have to think that getting uh, any two cards you need of potentially on turn two is going to take you over the edge. But Palkia being able to accelerate energies from the discard pile and just having some fantastic support like Irida has definitely made this a head-to-head -head battle. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's a lot of consistency in many other ways. Uh, a lot of it being piloted from that Intelli online, those Drizziles, those shady dealings there for both players. But we are going to see the swing from that Arceus V-Star for 180 damage with that slight damage modifier of the double turbo energy. If there were three basic energy, it would be that 200 base damage. But also the most important part, or one of the most important parts, searching out those three basic energy up to three basic energy and being able to attach them on your board, your V Pokemon, in any which way you like. Yep, we do see the water energy going to the Crobat. When you see one defensive boss, maybe you think potentially two could be coming down. We also know that the Temple of Sinnoh is waiting in the hand, so going to have to think about that with the, the double turbo energies in play. Yep, that Crobat only having one retreat cost, so would be able to retreat if another defensive boss did come out for Nathan. But now we are over on Nathan's turn here, activating an Irida Searching out that Radiant Greninja, such a powerful Pokemon for Nathan's deck, and a Quick Ball as well. If there is energy in hand, we might see a little bit more draw support from that Concealed Cards ability for Nathan, allowing him to discard one of those Water Energies, draw into two cards. Yeah, you can see how important a card like Battle VIP Pass is for this deck. When you get all of these Pokemon down turn one, you can absolutely just run straight out the gate, but now we see on turn two even, just go for these cards, find that Radiant Greninja, make use of these water energies in hand, try to turn them into something beneficial, because right now there's only one attacker going to need to see a second Palkia V at some point come down. Absolutely, and this could have looked a lot differently as well for Nathan, uh, because he was going second, Luca opting to go first, but if he had had the Irida in hand, going uh, on his first turn, that could have been much different because that Irida would have been able to search out that battle VIP pass. So that would have been extremely strong, but of course we only had that boss. All right, here we go, discarding those two Ooh. water Pokemon off of the origin form Palkia. V in the active to just retreat it. And then here we go, we do see that star portal, V star power ability to re-accelerate those energies onto the Radiant Greninja yeah, and using take that those sure knockouts. Double knockout on the Drizzile is going to be so beneficial to potentially slowing down Luka. You really just need to take away the draw engine so that maybe Luka doesn't find those cards like Sharon's Care to continually heal these Pokemon, bring them back up to the hand. But Luka understands, I'm not going to let you do that. Not this time. I do have the Quick Ball, and Sobble is going to come back down. Important to note, though, that Luka does not have a Mana Fee in this build, so not going to be able to avoid a second Radiant Greninja. I don't think we're going to see that this game, however. Yeah, luckily for Luca here, still in a very strong position, even after that double knockout there from Nathan, which was a very powerful play because Luca has two. Oh, yeah, we entered the attack phase with the Temple of Sinnoh in oh, play, and the no. double turbo energy only provides one energy. Not able to actually carry out that attack, unfortunately, there for Luca completely forgetting that that Temple of Sinnoh is in play. We kind of saw a little bit of hint to that because that one energy was attached to the Crobat V. So there was always a potential of like, oh no, is he also forgetting that Temple of Sinnoh? Because we could have seen that attachment elsewhere. But it is just so much pressure under these lights at this table. And mistakes like that unfortunately happen. We'll just have to see if Nathan is able to capitalize off of it for this upcoming turn. Already being a little bit on the back foot there with 
that damage on that origin form Palkia V-Star, but there is still so much potential in these future turns for Nathan, especially after that play from Luca. Yeah, Nathan needs all the help that he can get in a situation like this. A card like Melanie would have been ideal, being able to accelerate an energy. Maybe an origin form Palki of V-Star would have been able to get a nice attack off on this turn. Instead, it's going to be a little bit slower. We see likely just one water energy attached for the turn, and the Susuin Heavy Ball trying to find a little additional help and not going to find it. Yeah, that, uh, it is only searching out basic Pokemon from the prize cards. None of those prize cards having been the basic Pokemon. So that Hisuian Heavy Ball will just be going straight to the discard there. Nathan benching another Sobble, attaching an energy to that uh, no damage origin form Palkia V-Star on the bench. We're going to see the Capacious Bucket searching out two more water energy from the deck here. Yep, nice find. Going to have access to additional water energies to continue attacking. And we do see the Sobble and Drizzile. This is the ideal setup to just have access to a top deck Drizzile or maybe an Inteleon. You can just really start to get things going. When you have access to three cards and Luca oh. has no plays, just has to pass the turn. Melanie coming down. Nathan with all of the momentum here. I'm wondering if all of the energies as well uh, or how many energies are left in the deck for Luca potentially, but this is just not. Oh, we are going to see the double cross switcher <laughs> again here on that Crobat V for Nathan, switching into that origin form Palkia V Star this that was so on the bench. Smart. <laughs> he, oh, Luca my is holding on to double Sharon's care. If there was an attack into one of these Arceus V Stars, the energies would have just came right back into the hand, and Luca would be attacking next turn. Instead, going to be completely reliant on the top deck here, and Nathan is going to go down to just two prize cards. Oh my goodness, this is getting so tense here. Kyle, Nathan, making sure that he's mapping out all of his plays here, grabbing the scoop up net and the quick ball. Maybe I spoke too soon. Maybe Radiant Greninja could find some play here because yeah, Luca's going to need a lot more help. Maybe a second Sobel has to come down at some point, or we could see Moonlight Shuriken start to soften up these Arceus targets, and then you can't use a double Sharon's Care in one turn. Wow, we saw the evolution into the Inteleon for those two trainer cards. Search out of the deck, the scoop up net on that Inteleon, and then re-evolving that Drizzile from that evolution line there to search out another trainer card. So Nathan, like we said, really capitalizing on this Temple of Sinnoh being one of the most powerful cards for him right now in this matchup. Yeah, the Nessa is going to be a great find. We saw the quick shooting in Teleon, I believe, hit the discard pile at some point. So going to be able to bring that back into the hand and just finding some additional ways to deal damage on this board is going to be very beneficial for closing out on two prize cards to clean this game up. Oh, Nathan does wow. not find the second cross switcher, however, though. So going to have to attack these actives unless the boss's orders is found. Yes, and Luca needing an Ooh, energy. This is an opportunity. Arceus V in play. Needing that energy, but not getting it. Nathan just taking this game away right now. Unlimited potential here with these evolutions. There's searching a pal out pad. These trainer Boss's cards. orders is going to be found. It? Is Boss's there a orders? way to search? There's an evolution, evolution incense. incense. Here we go. If we can see, oh, here we go. Drizzile evolving into that Shady Dealings for the boss's orders, for the damage to be able to take that knock on the Arceus V. You see Nathan looking so relieved here. I'm sure that was a very stressful match up there for him in so many circumstances, but he was really able to take it away. If you ask Nathan what the most important card in his deck was, I think on uh, <laughs> number 57 of that list was Temple of Sinnoh, but sure enough, finds the perfect opportunity and just able to capitalize on such an advantageous position and take these huge knockouts, finds a way to navigate through all of these six prizes and ends up with a clean 2-0 victory here to become a two-time international champion. Wow, what an incredible resume to already have. Taking that EUIC championship.